this album is called Kaiso. And Kaiso is a, a old West African word. And it comes from the form of encouragement to an artist while doing something, even a fight or a dance or a song. And so Kaiso is what you would say when you enjoy something. Evolve hundreds of years, Kaiso becomes the reference for Calypso based on people being so satisfied with what they were hearing. They would yell out, Kaiso, Kaiso. And that became the term that was used to refer to Calypso among Kaisonians. We eventually began having what you call political commentary, social commentary Calypso, where any issue that happened, a Calypsonian would sing about it. A man named the Growling Tiger, um, who my grandfather actually recorded with, he said once that Calypso is the poor man's newspaper. Um, it's an editorial and song. It's for those who couldn't read, they would be notified of events based on the Calypso that, that they would hear. What the salesman said was handmade in the USA. I mean, it's pretty nice, but I think it is overpriced. Oh, shucks, I almost pay 200 bucks. <laughs> We, we take a bunch of traditional calypsos and we play them with my jazz group. We have Jack Schwartz Bart, Brian Pogans, Obed Calve, Ben Williams, Solomon Fortner. Um, I rearrange quite a few of the classics from my favorite calypso owners. People like Grandmaster Lord Kitchener, the Mighty Sparrow, the Roaring Lion. We do some traditionals as well, some traditional chants. Some of it is actually not even in English, some of it is in Patois. also have some special guests on board. The Lord Superior, a Calypsonian who, who came up in the 50s with Spiral and Kitsch. I got in touch with him and I said, I'm doing a record of Calypso. I'm a jazz musician, I live in New York, I'm from Trinidad originally. Would you like to be a part of it? And he was like, you have my 100% support. And I was actually really humbled by the fact that he would entertain coming to New York and doing this record with me, which is a you know, blessing, so thank you, Shuki. This project, as far as I'm concerned, is fantastic. This young man, Mr. Charles, is going to take it from one stage to another stage, a higher stage. From the 20s, Calypso used to be very popular in New York, especially My landlady too, in, 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 in Harlem. Uh, mountains uh, to raise rent. They had something called the house rent party where Calypso was sung and everybody chip in to, um, to pay the rent. <laughs> it's a part of the culture here. No, it isn't fear. This persecution I cannot bear. Every Monday, Mr. Gay made the rent. All how I try, I cannot prevent. She telling me, Mr. Gay made the rent. I think this is going to, to broaden the whole thing and sensitize the world to the versatility of the Calypso music. I am very happy and proud to be selected to be a part of this project. It's really a pleasure to have Monty on, on board for the album. I've been, I've been lucky enough to do a couple of Calypso programs with him, do some Harlem Kingston Express concerts with him. The first record I ever got, the first record I ever heard, jazz record, was an album called Yard Movement, which is a concert that Monty did. That was my first introduction to jazz, and it was an introduction that, that taught me already that jazz was about a fusion between different styles of music. And really an inspiration and a great, great joy to have him on the album. Calypso influenced me as a musician. Big part of my life, because when you when you're a kid and you hear all these local musicians playing Kitchener songs and Sparrow songs and Roaring Land songs. You are, um, it gets in your brain. And I heard uh, the, the Trinidadian Calypsonians and their songs. So I didn't even think of Jamaica and Trinidad, I just heard the, the music. Also Ralph McDonald, the legend himself, who 
is the son of a Calypsonian. Most people know him as a composer and percussionist. He's a songwriter and producer. I met Ralph in Trinidad. I was about 12, 13, 14. I was really young. I used to play on the road with Face Dudes, the steel band in Trinidad and Tobago. They said, yo, yo, you, 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 you. Let our man play, let our man play, let him play. And he comes and starts playing. You know, he has very soft touch. This guy, he's something else. And they said, that's Ralph McDonald. And I was like, oh, okay, that's Ralph McDonald. Have a bell on the gate, ring it and wait. She must come after you call. And, you know, to me, those, you know, those songs are just priceless. And I mean, I, I sang them, I could sing them now like I sang them when I was a kid in first heard them. It was just good growing up. But because of my dad, I had to listen to uh, Calypso music, thank God. Growing up in Harlem was, for me, was a nice rainbow of colors in terms of music. I've had some real big, big songs. One of the biggest songs that I ever had in terms of sale-wise was a song called Calypso Breakdown which was in the movie soundtrack album, Saturday Night Fever. These old standards that you did, especially Sparrow, I mean Rose. I remember singing Rose when I was a kid. Sugar Bum Bum, Teresa. This brings back memories for me. I love it, I'm a musician. That's what I first grew up hearing. You, you take me to another level. And that's what I like about the music, because that's what music is about. That's what my dad played, that kind of music, that kind of vibe. So to me, it's like coming home or going home. For me, as a jazz musician, at the core and a composer, I was always blown away by the melodies, by the arrangements, by the use of interplay between the horns, the percussion, the vocals. And so for me, the melodies are so strong and so beautiful that I can take that melody and construct a whole different arrangement off of it simply because the melodies are that sound. And so that's, for me, what the core of Kaiso, the album, is about. It's really about connecting with a different aspect of my musical roots, really digging into paying homage to legends like Kitsch and Spiral. So the Kitsch has passed on and his legacy will live on forever as a, as a Calypsonian and a composer. And Robert Lyon is no longer with us. Um, Melody is no longer with us. Pretender is no longer with us. But we need to keep the music pushing forward and we need to keep people knowing about what I think of as our classical music in Trinidad and Tobago. We, we go through a bunch of different phases in colors, so sort of the up tune, the party songs, the dance songs. And so now we've, we've recorded it, it was quite fun. We lucky enough to have so many of my friends from, from school, from Julia, on board. Um, the great chamber orchestra conducted by Rich Rosa, um, who also arranged Teresa for us. And yes, it was a fun, fun time. Especially places like Gillespie, where we did a show recently. I hope we could go back there again to sing this refrain. And what I'm saying, it is really true. The 
some things in here, it got to be you. Well, this engineer, he is the very one. His name is David Darlington. I like the way he makes on the board. He makes me feel like I'm a lord. When his music is mixed so nice, it looks like peas and rice. <laughs> me and him are very good friends, but he never take me for a ride in the Mercedes Benz. <laughs> Well, Etienne, 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 you're a most talented man. And this is something I never knew, that you could play quite so and you could extend both. You're doing pretty good. You're doing just the way you should. Etienne, excellent. I think I'm going to hire you in the Calypso tent. <laughs> <laughs>